we just skip everything and I just start preaching. I'm sorry. But we won't. We won't. Because I have to be brief today. I'm serious. Don't shake your head, baby. Not baby, you guys. I love you, but my baby up there, my, my wife. So I, I know she's like, there's no way you're going to do this. But let me read this real quick. Because this is the promise. When I, when I think of this and where I've been and where I'm at now, and, and maybe you're there now, and, and this can still be hope, but it says, Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me. <laughs> Least I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me known the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, oh Lord, I love the psalmist. <laughs> I can't get enough of it, Lord. I like to look at it almost every morning, Lord, and just I think about the times that he says, I lift my name up on your holy hill. I cry to you and you answer to me. And, and, and then Psalm 1, that being planted and firm in your word and, and skip over to uh, 119. That's so beautiful, Lord, that you hear my cry that even for my cry, you have a plan. And even if that plan means to just trust in you because you will not forsake us, Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for these rich, rich promises. Lord, someone today has come in in a different way than they were yesterday, Lord. Uh, will you not only prick and stir their hearts, Lord, but transform them. Transform them to go home and show others that not only that they've been to a church on 8985, but they have met with the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for these promises. In your beautiful name, amen. Amen. All right, grab your hymn notes, turn to page 30. If you're able, stand. And we're going to sing first and last. First and last verses. All right. church and you haven't joined yet, keyword being yet, then I still want you to stay too to understand some of the needs, some of the struggles, and and some of the good things. It's not all bad. Um, uh, the reason uh, that if, if it's heavy on your heart, some of the tithing uh, that, we, that this church needs and the provisions that I believe that, that the Lord has already set uh, through our obedience and commitment to Him, I believe it will be... Uh, uh, his plan's always going to prevail regardless. Um, and Angie wanted me to thank everybody that came yesterday. Unfortunately, this morning she woke up with bronchitis, um, so they are not here. It was uh, baby Jackson's uh, first birthday. It was really cool. And um, 
But please, please stay after. This is really important to us. Uh, Paul has spent a lot of time on uh, on the uh, the agenda, the sheet with some of the numbers on it. And believe me, I'll be the first to tell you, I have no problem saying this. I remember Jay saying, hey, there's a business meeting. And I was like, let me know how it goes because I won't be there. So don't be me back then, please. Uh, Diane, I definitely want to say a special prayer for her. Uh, she goes into her surgery tomorrow. Um, for her back, and uh, she does a lot for this church. And, and I have to correct something. Uh, my father always told me as a preacher, be careful saying people's names. He's not going to like that I'm saying this, nor is she. But last week, I got on my little, one of my positive rants uh, about people that do a lot in the church and help, and, and I left out somehow Harry and Tina. So know that I love you. Know that that was not on purpose. And I know you're going to get me for this later, but I do love you. And I love everybody here. And I just love the kingdom of, of the Lord. And a uh, little bit different this week, like I said, as far as the format. So at this time, we are going to take up the offering. I have you called over to you. Thank you for this day. Many really blessings you have brought to us all through this week. Thank you for the uh, sunshine this morning. Lord, it's been a blessing to get the third part. Get to know of our service this morning. Be a car pastor. Bless this all. In Christ's name, you pray. Amen. Amen. I was going to try 28, but there's just no way. 28 will carry us. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, but it will be continued next week as far as uh, I'm going to stay into Romans. Romans has really been good to me uh, this week. Um, and I encourage you, if you've ever made the statement, I've already read that once, please, you can, in my opinion, you cannot read Romans enough and continue to get fed each time you read it something new. Um, so... Uh, let us pray first, and then we'll uh, jump into this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the intercession that you promised. Uh, <laughs> Lord, thank you for walking in the flesh. Lord, that uh, Satan would say to you that he will be back at an opportune time. And Lord, I believe that happens in our life all too often. Lord, will the armor of God be set for that moment? Will the intercession be lined up for that moment? Will I truly believe that the things that happened in my past don't have to own me, but they can prepare and equip me for what you have planned next because your plan prevails. Lord, thank you for this time. Lord, may the uh, business meeting uh, just maybe honor you in this to show others what this local church needs, Lord. Uh, not We are not beggars, Lord. We are trying to, uh, every week, Lord, I say that I want to be the church I'm inviting people to come to, uh, even even and especially behind closed doors, 
thank you for this, Lord, in your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. So, never alone. Um, are we living in such a way in our relationships towards others that there's proof <laughs> of our intimate relationship and intercession with the Holy Spirit? And I've been really thinking about this a lot this week. The, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's so... It's refreshing and it's rewarding to know because sometimes I think we say, well, we'll just pray, we'll do this, but we don't realize what's going on in the, in the, in the scheme of things, the intercession of things. And, uh, and in other words, uh, does my talk match my walk? And um, I used to have a friend of mine that said, uh, don't sing it, bring it. And I don't mean for people pleasing, but don't sing it, bring it, meaning like, am I, stay, am I really... Does it sound cool for me to say, like, standing on the promises of God? Because that's, and I can raise my hands, and that's a pretty good thing, but right, am, I, am I really living that? Is, is the intercession taking place uh, when a crisis comes up and crushes us, and the plans you made aren't going as you, as you planned? Uh, do we automatically get pushed out of the presence of God? Suddenly we forget God's promises, plans, provisions, and most of all, we totally forget how obtainable and available and free, oh, amen, and free the access of the Holy Spirit is if we're believers in Him. This is free access. And like I said, uh, please read into 7 and the beginning part of 8 when he's talking about an adoption of sons and, and predestined and the suffering at this present time cannot reveal to what's coming. Just, I would just, and that doesn't have to dangle in front of me and I groan through the day, trudging through the day as a, as a so-called Christian, just hoping that I'll be able to, uh-uh. No, it's not that kind of hope. This is a hope that if I get a drip of the grace that I'm not deserving of, that the ocean is provided for me. And I just, I want that. In chapter 8, especially in these verses, Paul draws attention to the Spirit's help and resisting sin and making decisions. Furthermore, the Spirit confirms that where God's children are adopted into His family and we can address Him as Father. Therefore, nothing we face on earth can be compared to the glory that awaits us. And once again, that is in... Um, um, future glory is, is what it's labeled when it starts at verse uh, 18. So please go back and, and read some of that uh, today. And I'm dying to get into 7 because it's such good stuff. And, and, and I'm going to leave with this before I get into the scripture, but uh, <laughs> I told my wife I wouldn't do this. She, she just knows me so well. But it's hard not to do this because it's just, it really is. Like it, it, because it's, these promises are so firm. I just I want you to just remember like like Paul's basically saying, like, hey, I don't trust myself. It's impossible for me to. When I was living in sin and I didn't know Christ, I, 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 all I knew was sin. So now I kind of know better, uh, but I still can't, and you've heard me say this a million sermons, I still can't trust my heart. Hey, Scott, just trust your heart. No, no, I can't trust my heart. I said to a good friend of mine, uh, Sister Lucy, I'd said to her a while back, I said, um, there was a circumstance, and I said, I just don't trust myself. And she didn't say, what are you talking about? You're a pastor. No. I know the devil and how he baits us. I know it. I see it, especially today's times. So I want to read verses um, uh, 26 and 27. Uh, but, but first, let's look at the certainty and hope of verses 24 and 25. As a, uh, This is the way my mind goes. It's almost, and this is what I love about 7 into 8 is like a primer. Seven's kind of, it, it, some of it's kind of tongue-tying, and I'm not going to get into it, especially starting at about verses 17 to 28. They're kind of tongue-tied. He's, Paul's saying, uh, you know, uh, for I do not know the good, but I want to know it, but I know evil, but I want to know, I don't know what to keep doing, but I keep doing the bad, and because all I knew was sin, and, and it's, it's kind of, he rattles it off. But verses 24 and 25 remind me of like, um, I'm not a yard guy, so... Uh, when I'm trying to like start something and then maybe Jamie will be like, I, I think there's a primer on it, baby. Like you just, you just keep cooking, baby. I love you, but you're just not good at this. You know, and, and, and I'm cool with that. I, you don't want me, someone said, can you help me build like an entertainment system one time? And I said, not if you want to put something on it. So I'm not your, I'm not your guy when it comes to that. I got no problem with that. But verses 24 and 25, it, they act as a primer to what he's leading into for, uh, for uh, chapter eight. But it says, um, 
So let's dive in. It says, For in this hope we were saved. Speaking of Christ, the adoption uh, predestined. Now hope that is seen is not hope. Hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Because we've been there before. We know that, hey, this storm can't take us down. Financially, we've been here before. You know, and maybe it's some things I did. I can't get surprised when I run up a credit card and then the bill comes in. You know, it's just, it's just not going to happen. So the source and the hope are in the intercession of the Holy Spirit in everything, in our relationships and everything. Hold on. Even if it means holding on to dear life. Hey, hey, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm, uh, we're on the, <laughs> hey, I might have showed up today, but we're on the brink of like a divorce or we're on the brink of, I don't even talk to such and such or I don't want to forgive him, but just listen to what the Holy Spirit says. And uh, 26 and 27 it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. Groaning too deep for words. And He who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Man, I love, when I was reading this, it was like, thank you, Lord. It was like He was giving me a fresh armor of something that's been in front of me for so long that I didn't realize, wait, hold on, so you're doing this for me? I mean, we can trust what He did 2,000 years ago, but not 20 days from now? Or two hours from now? Like, it doesn't make sense, and I need this. I need to be rooted in this. The source, the hope. So, verses 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. It's too good not to read it again, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep. We realize that we are energized by the Holy Spirit and prayer. And prayer. We know what it is to pray in the atmosphere and the presence of the Holy Spirit, but... We do not often realize that the Holy Spirit Himself prays in us, with us, through us, <laughs> in words and groanings that cannot, we cannot utter ourselves. I want you to just think about that for some for a second. Then we, we 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 ought to know, but maybe we don't. And and what do my prayers look like? And hey, I'll be the first to admit it. I can get I can get off into that thing of like. Hey, kind of rattling off some things and saying, "All right, Lord, uh, you know, I love my wife. Uh, forgive me for my sins." And you know, but then I then I catch myself sometimes be like, "Hold on, hold on, hold on, Lord, hold on. This is real. This is real." Yeah, Phil, uh, brother Mark uh, said that he was gonna. Uh, it was heavy on his heart. He was gonna put a a chair in the corner, and he said, "I said, what's that for?" And he was like, "It's it's the overflow." of what I believe the Lord's going to do in this church. And I said, Amen, brother. Amen. Because I have to feed who shows up. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, and I, I fell into that before where I just look at everything that's going on and who's not here and all that. No, I can't do that. So in the opening of verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, thank God. When we're weak and we do not know exactly how we should pray, God Himself through the Holy Spirit helps us by making intercession for us. Remember in John 17, 9, and I love this. Please go back and read it. John 17. I, this is the priestly, the highly priestly prayer. This is him praying to God. Uh, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. That's where the adoption comes in. That's where the predestination comes in. And, and I won't get down that that, that too deep into the hole of predestination, that's a whole different sermon. Uh, but if you're a believer today, the intercession, it, it's, it's there. It's so accessible and obtainable. I just please, please know this, no matter what you're going through. Remember, Christ, while on earth, interceded with the Father. That's what He's doing there. And that's why when I started thinking of the, uh, the garden in uh, Gethsemane, and you might have heard me say it in my prayer, because it was so heavy on me, because remember, before that, He's, Satan's tempted him in the wilderness. 
And he's saying, hey, I'm waiting for an opportune time. So what, is, what have I given the devil leeway to to wait for that opportune time? Because I don't want to make it easy on him. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. But let me tell you right now, folks, and, and, and I, if this is a news flash, I'm sorry. It's not to discourage you. Uh, I don't want to beat up on anybody, but the reality is this. The closer I get to this the Holy Spirit that they sang about, Come dwell on me, come and search my heart, O oh Lord. Like the psalmist says, the closer I get, the filthier I feel. No, no. Hold on. I, I might have been looking at my phone and checking a text. He didn't just say the closer he gets to Christ, the, the filthier. Because I used to hear that kind of stuff and I was like, man, what? what? Then we're do Then I'm doomed. Because maybe I'm only doing it once a week or twice a week, but, but that's not what it means. He doesn't say he's going to stop doing this because you stop. Hey, the plan must go on, guys. The plan's going to prevail. I can sit around and go get some fancy glasses, and please, I'm not making fun of the Eclipse. I love stuff like this. It's cool. It's awesome. But there's so many people flooding my text saying, like, it's the end of the world and end of the world. Is your own house in order? <laughs> I'm worried about... Yeah, okay, it's lined up with, uh, with Jonah and, the, and the, 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 the consolation of the whale. And, all, and I'm, not, I'm not mocking any of that. It's cool, but i got to take it to the Word. i got to take it to the Word. Is my own, my own house in order? Because that stuff's fascinating and it can make me sound real smart to others. Like, oh yeah, Jonah, or the whale, and it's going to be a consolation, and this and that, and this is going to line up. So, you, And it's a cross on the map because it's going through all the different towns. And, and that's all cool. But guess what? I don't want to sit around doing that. I want to make sure before he comes, I did this this morning, I, I found this little game, and I'm going to tell on myself, and, uh, but I found this little game on my phone, it's like a little uh, shooting game. And I don't know, it's just cool. But last night I found myself like ignoring my wife to play this game because, hey man, come on, I just got a, like a rifle with a scope. You know, so I'm like, man, this is, this is maybe I'll help you, but come on. So this morning I got up and I, I grabbed my phone and I was like, no way. I'm not going to go preach about intercession and how good the Holy Spirit is and at that same time ignore my wife. And I can't lie to you, when I got ready to delete it, and this, isn't this what Satan does? This is the, when I got ready to delete it, I was like, but what about all my progress? I'm, I'm at a good level here. I'm getting ready to get like an M60. Like, but what about, and then I just, it said, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I'm sure. So what's getting in the way of that spirit? Because nine times out of ten, it's, I'm sorry, folks, and you, you can throw something at me, you can get mad. Nine times out of ten, it ain't Joe Biden. It's not Trump. It's not something I, you, you could, if that's what makes you feel better to sleep a little better at night, that's on you. But I'm telling you, that's not what it is. It's you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's, the, that's the bottom line. I can sugarcoat it all I want. I can, I can add stuff to this Bible, but the Word says I can't alter His Word. Amen. So there's nothing I'm going to add to it that's not already there. If it's not in this Bible, and stop coming up to me, sorry, I promise I'm not in a bad mood, I feel great today, but stop coming up to me and asking me about the lost books. Unless you got this down, I don't want to hear about the lost books of Enoch and Mary. and all. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't want to hear about it. I want you to come up and be like, hey, Romans 8 really helped me. I was going to react a certain way, but the Holy Spirit, because you said He was groaning with me, not because I say, not my opinion, my, my opinion is nothing. Because the Word says, for us, He's grown in deep words. I was able to learn something in that moment and not react the way that I used to react because as He says in, in uh, 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 chapter 7, that kind of sin, has, it's, it's gone away. So it, That's all I knew. Now I don't have to know that anymore because I'm new in Christ. The Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groaning in deep words. We have the idea that prayer is only an exercise of our spiritual life. Pray without ceasing, it says. We read that. The disciples said to our Lord, what did He ask? And I say this all the time, man, I love it. Because I'm not going to sit here and lie. If I'm hanging with Jesus, knowing the guy that I used to be, long hair, jump kicking people, trying to always be right, never be happy. I just want to be right. I want to win an argument. And people say, oh, look at that guy, man. He's really, hey, he won that argument. Don't mess with him because he'll take you outside. No, 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 no. That's not what, because I would probably be like, hey, I want to learn to throw down some fire on someone. Can you teach me that? No, no, no. They said, hey, teach me to pray. Will you teach me to pray, Lord? That's always so fascinating to me. So fascinating. The disciples were good men and well-versed in Jewish prayer. Yet, 
when they came in contact with Jesus Christ, instead of realizing they could pray well, they came to the conclusion <laughs> they did not know how to pray at all. And our Lord instructed them in the initial stages of prayer. I'm going to have Gene, Brother Gene, uh, talking about drawing near in this, in this intercession in the Holy Spirit. Uh, read uh, 725. It's too good to skip over. Verse, uh, Hebrews 7.25. You don't have to flip to it, but just listen up to this. It's really good stuff. Consequently, He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. Uttermost always lives to make intercession for angel. No, 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 no. Angel. The work, no, not the world. He already said that. For us. Intercession for us. No matter what you're going through for us. You're nervous that maybe your kids in, in college are doing some uh, shenanigans or maybe they're hanging out with people that are saying, oh, I can't believe you're buying all that like religious God stuff. Man, hey, stand firm on this. Believe that He's groaning with you. He's not leaving you alone. You're going through a conflict. He's right there with you. Most of us can probably remember a time when we were religious before we were born again of the Spirit of God. And the, and the reason I put that is I started thinking, I was like, man, that sounds a little harsh, but hey, look, I want a relationship with God. If you can show me in here where it says a religion with God, you please get me after church and show me because I'm dying to see it. That's not what it says. This is a relationship. And it's very important to me. If I'm going to make this thing and do the thing like I believe, do life the way I think God wants me to do it, Starting with my marriage, starting with understanding who Christ is, what He did on the cross daily. I called a friend of mine today and I said, uh, uh, <laughs> I said, um, it was Sister Lucy again, when we talk a lot. Uh, but we, and it's funny because I always say this, I, when, when she uh, passes away or the Lord uh, takes her up into, uh, into His chambers, uh, I'm not going to, I don't even know what she drives. I've seen her vehicle, but we talk so much about Scripture, I don't know any really thing else. I couldn't tell you her favorite color. I know some of her favorite movies because we share the same, uh, you know, as far as some, um, uh, some, some Christian movies. But I called her today and I was like, hey, guess what, Lucy? And she was like, what's that? And I was like, he's still risen. He's still risen. Not just last week. He's still risen. That was my spirit today. When I was walking down the driveway and I was like, Lord, thank you for this. Do I have problems in my life? Yes. Dead in my life? Oh, yeah. I got a lot going on. There's a lot of things going on. And life can get so discouraging. But when I was walking that driveway, I was like, thank you, Lord. What an opportunity to present your word. Man, when we could pray fairly well, but after we were born again, we became conscious of what Paul mentions here. Our utter infirmities or groaning too deep for words. So I did not know how to pray. Reliance on the Holy Spirit for prayer is what Paul is bringing out in this verse. It's reliance. Reliance on it. I've got to remember each day when I pray. And it's, I'm telling you, I hope this is encour it's encouraging this morning because although it may be a short sermon, I just I, I want you to try something a little different this week. Go into it with a new set of eyes. With a brand new set of eyes. No matter where you go, Ask the Lord, because He's already there. You don't have to ask Him. I do not have to say right now, if this is true and I believe this, I do not have to say, Paul, and I've seen this in churches, and I understand their content, I think, and I'm not down on anybody, but I do not have to say. And some might disagree with this. If you do, that's cool, but I'm just, I'm just going off what the Word says and what, it, what, he, what he tells the disciples before He uh, gets crucified. He's saying, look, the Helper will come. The Helper, I can't stay. You, in other words, you don't want me to stay. It ain't going to fare well. Greater works than thee. So think about this this week. When you have that intercession, many people will say, invite the Holy Spirit in. You don't have to. Holy Spirit, look what He's doing. He's, it's for you. He's doing it for us. He's interceding for us all the time. Now, do I believe I can kind of step out of that and slip out of that and let the ways of the world where seven, uh, Psalm 73 comes true, Lord, I almost slipped. Looking at the, 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 you know, looking at the arrogant, prosper, that don't even believe in you, Lord. You know, I, I don't want that. I don't want it. I don't need it. All right. And then he goes on to say, our utter infirmities or groaning, of course, too deep for words. So did I know 
Did I not know how to pray? Reliance on the Holy Spirit for prayer is what Paul is bringing out in this verse. The whole source of our strength is receiving, recognizing, and realizing on and through the Holy Spirit. You've heard me preach it before. Don't go through it, grow through it. And that's something I, it's, it, I love when I told uh, Ken Cash years ago, I said, hey, I'm going to steal something from you. He's like, hey man, Ecclesiastics, nothing new under the sun. You're not stealing anything from me. What an honor. What an honor it is to see Carson up here singing. What an honor. That's an honor. Seeing Grant show up. God bless you, brother. You know, what an honor. Knowing that people are going through real stuff and, and, and he picked you. you. You got saved. He picked you. He's dwelling with you this week. He's groaning with you. He's strengthening you. That's what the armor of God is. But when I feel like I've forgotten something, maybe it's the sword, which represents the, the, the Word of God. Maybe I've gotten away from that. That's when I need a Christian brother not to co-sign and say, oh, come on, man. You're, dude, you're a preacher. You don't need to be in the Word that much. Uh -uh. I don't need a co-signer. I need someone that's going to say, hey, brother, get in the Word. Let's pray on it right now. Let's bring him into it. And that's not contradicting what I said as far as the Holy Spirit, but that's what I can do. I can step out of His presence. I don't want to do that. Then in verse 27, according to the will of God. The will of God. So many times we say, I just, you know, and I see this in recovery a lot. I don't know, um, I don't know what God's will is for me. It took me a long time to say this, but yes, you do. How? Because His Word says it. Who am I honoring? Am I honoring Scott Watts in the morning? Am I looking for a pat on the back saying, hey, uh, hey, man, great, great, great sermon, man, hey, fist bump, you know, all this. No, I'm not looking for that. There's so many things. You know what I can't wait for? And I love this church. I can't wait to get to heaven and, 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 and me say, hey, uh, do, do, you, do you recognize him? No, no I, don't, I don't recognize him. That's when you were at the store. That's when you went to the store and witnessed to someone. <laughs> They went on to do something. Or that's when, like I said last week, yeah, okay, none of them are here. So, hey, you know what? Cancel it next, next year when no Easter egg blast. None of them are here. None of them are in our local church. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Maybe, just maybe, we die, we get to heaven and say, who is that? Oh, man, that was a little boy that wasn't going to eat that night that got three hot dogs, a bunch of candy. He was running for his life, not because he was excited to get eggs, but because he wanted food for later in his bedroom because his mom can't provide for him because maybe the father was a drunk or doing something like that. And, and, and now he, he became a huge missionary and made up an app to feed people. And it was so easy and everybody gave $1. And, and now the, the population of people that needed to be feed, fed and homeless... That one person did that, but the one person that we all get the intercession with because they felt it and they remembered it, what, what it was like is Jesus. Yeah. It's Jesus. It's the intercession. And man, I'm sorry. That just it really, man, gets me so fired up. That's the intercession for me, Lord? Yeah, for you. But I'm crushed in spirit. I'm broken hearted. Yeah, but I draw nigh to you. But I cry to thee. Yeah, and I told you I'd never leave you or forsake you. But I don't feel like I have an armor. Yeah, but I give you the armor of God. The whole armor of God. Use it. Reach out to people. Why reach out to people? Because it's what Paul's saying. Encourage your brother. Lift them up. Man, we need it more than ever. Every time I see a, a, a video of uh, Dusty Marie and her whole family, I'm thinking, man, that is, Wow. Thank you, Lord. Lord, touch someone's heart. Touch someone's heart. And I understand ministries are, people do different things. I, I, I said this on Facebook a while back. If you're down in someone's ministry, or even a local church or something, I mean, I mean just straight up down in it, man, get on your knees, repent, and jump in God's Word. Don't neglect your gifts. We all got different things that we do. I don't want to say, hey, you're not doing something now. In a positive way, yeah, I can build you up, encourage you, and I want to do that. The whole source of our strength is receiving, recognizing, relying on the Holy Spirit according to His will. The Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit's help and intercession is perfect because He searches the hearts of those whom He helps, and He is able to guide our prayers according to the will of God. It always goes back to the cross. It always goes back to the cross. Gethsemane, no, it can't be taken. I have to take up this cup. Oswald Chambers says, I love this, prayer does not equip us for greater works. Prayer is the greater work.
Prayer is the greater work. Hang with Jesus this week. Speak to Jesus this week. John 16, 7 and 8. Gene, you have your Bible? Or I can look it up. Mm. Sorry, I know that was... I wasn't going to do this, but it's just too good. It just went in my head. Oh, here we go. Now that they know that everything that you have given me is from you. Oh, uh, wait, that's six. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay with me, stay with me, please. This is good. It's too good not to... I, I can't do it. Uh, I, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage, the Lord Jesus Christ, now, for your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, oh, this is beautiful, the Helper will not come to you. This had to be done. That's why the cup couldn't be back. But if I go, I will send him to you. Are you kidding me? Thank you, Lord. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Stop. Yes, worry about people's salvation. Yes, spread the seed. But stop. Hey, the only part I have in it is the effort. Period. I can pray. I cannot. All I can do is say, hey, Brother Rob, here's what I believe the gospel is, and here's my testimony to what it's done in my life. Now, I know there's pastors. John MacArthur says it. No one wants to hear your opinion. Okay, opinions on God's word, I understand that. But testimonies of the heart, that's actually in the Bible. So I think it's important to tell someone your testimony and where you've been because you can let them know, hey, look, look, I've been there. Remember, look, how many times did, we, uh, did, uh, did, did people in the Bible carry someone else's burden? Hey, let us take you somewhere. And we're not just going to drop you off at the door, but we're going to cut a hole in there because we know what Jesus has done, we know what He keeps doing, and we know who's in control, and we know who's at the, got the enemy on that footstool. We know who it is. So I just want us to just latch on to that, cling on to that, and I'm so proud of myself because I did really good on time. <laughs> Is a mirror. <laughs> I am going to, uh, and I have to say this. I know we have a different order today, but I have to say this, and this is serious. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know, you don't have that kind of relationship, hey, I'll be the first to tell you, I know it's embarrassing. And I know what his word says. If you can't recognize me in front of man, how can I recognize you in, my father, in front of my Father which art in heaven? And I get that, I know. I was that guy. I was too nervous, but I made it. I made it up. I made that, oh man, it felt like football fields when I was 13 years old. It felt like football fields, but I made it. And I accepted them into my heart. So if you do not know that, and, and the unfortunate news is this, it's not a scare tactic. But if you do not know that, please, man, rise up. Rise up out of your seat because without Him, it is separation from the Lord Jesus Christ, from His provisions, from this comfort, from Him groaning. It's separation from that. And I'm sorry. They say scare tactics don't work. Hey, can I just say this on the pulpit? Because it's in the Bible too. I was watching a Christian movie that, uh, that uh, beat this word out, but I'm not going to beep it out today. That scares the hell out of me. Not anymore. Not in this house. I don't have to. Not in this house. I don't have to live like that anymore. Let us pray. I'll ask Paul to come up and we'll get this thing started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, <laughs> I mean it, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that when I was running wild, that <laughs> you still fed me, man, Lord. That when I was backsliding, you still gave me away. <coughs> I wasn't worthy, Lord. I'm not worthy now. Lord, I think of the filthy rags and but I also think that I don't have to get cleaned up to come here and come to this altar, Lord. That Hebrews 9, when they're talking about the, the, how the priest would come by once a year with the, uh, the, the, the blood sacrifices and things like that, Lord, I, I don't have to do that anymore. It's under a new covenant. It's your blood, Lord. You promised, Lord. You promised that you would dwell within me and that you would send the helper. And Lord, it's much more than that to me. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you did at Calvary. Thank you for, even when that opportune time did come back, that even in your flesh you didn't give way to Satan. Lord, thank you. Lord God.
got us to connect with one another. Just love one another, Lord. Even when it seems, especially when it seems a little awkward, Lord. Lord, once again, be with uh, uh, Angie, be with Sister Diane. Lord, uh, wow, just please guide this church to love on them. Show that blanket of love because you show it to us even when we're not deserving. Thank you for that groaning, Lord, in your beautiful name.